As African leaders meet in Addis Ababa for the annual January summit, discussions are expected to focus on the state of peace and security on the continent. The situations in Burundi, South Sudan, DRC and Libya will receive particular attention. Also to be discussed are plans to improve infrastructure connectivity on the continent, which is one of the programs identified in the Agenda 2063 Plan of Action. Team South Africa, led by His Excellency President Jacob Zuma, we will be here with about seven ministers focused really on making Agenda Africa work for Africans and of course South Africa. We, we had been the beneficiaries of what the forebearers dreamed of, a decolonized Africa. That's what we'll remember them for the 50, first 50 years. Moving on for the next coming 50 years, minus two years, we were reminded at the retreat, we focus on the one. We have turned the vision into agenda Africa. In South Africa, we went into the adoption of the first year, the first 10 year implementation plan of this uh, Agenda Africa 2063, which focuses on the seven aspirations of the AU, amongst them being silencing the gun by 2020, that there should be peace and security and development on the continent. We don't have a choice to do one, and the other will come later, but both. Um, so we're also looking at a connectivity of our infrastructure. Uh, our president remains the champion of this infrastructure, particularly road and rail. We're making tremendous uh, progress. We also have the Yamasukuru decision, which is was passed years ago uh, in Cote d'Ivoire, but there were no many takers. Now we've got majority of the countries who have adopted that, that aviation is one other leg of connecting our continent in order to connect our, uh, uh, the, uh, our, our economies. So in this uh, uh, summit, the focus would be, as we do that, because we, the world is patriarchal. I thought it was only Africa. Uh, the, we haven't changed the theme, which we had last year. We would still focus on emancipation, of, of, on, on human rights, but also looking as we look at human rights, looking at the women's rights and empowerment of women and youth moving forward because we are quite a useful society. That's the only way that beneficiation and industrialization would make a sense to all of us. The thorny issue of silencing the guns in Africa remains a challenge. Recently, terrorist attacks took place at Lido Beach in Mogadishu, Somalia, and resulted in the deaths and injuries of scores of innocent civilians. When the whole world had forgotten about Somalia and had declared Somalia a failed state, it took Africans to bring about, if you like, the renaissance of Somalia. We are dealing with this very painful but uh, sporadic attacks which happened largely much more in the Middle East than it does uh, in, in, in Somalia. The determination of working with the people of Somalia and thanks to the support and the volunteerism of countries like Burundi, uh, uh, Uganda, Kenya and others that we are not giving up. Somalia is not going back to the ruins. It's never going to be a failed state again. I think that's a matter we should celebrate. Because this uh, sporadic incidents of uh, explosion of, of, of uh, bombs happens in Paris, happens everywhere else. But uh, of course nobody declares them failed states.
they resolve to continue keeping on. So South Sudan, they are very few, uh, as you know, our president is, our deputy president has been appointed by our president to be our special envoy as per the invitation of South Sudanese. Uh, there are very few disagreements on moving on. So I think the determination there also to move on is much greater th today than it was yesterday. And we are confident that it is not impossible for us to silence the gun by 2020. But also those who see us as a market to sell their toys, to keep us killing each other, need to slow down. And I think we'll have to start naming names as time goes on. Burundi, as I was leaving the hall now, is a subject of the Permanent Representative Council who are reporting to us about their work. And we've been having engagements with Burundi uh, uh, together with the um, chair of the East African community, the new Honorable Minister Mahiga. We've had a conversation with him right now. They visited us during the holidays uh, to say, by the way, the peace that prevailed in Uganda didn't just come by. It was led by Nyerere, led by our father of the nation, Madiba, who went over to President uh, Zuma, who was deputy president then. They are now re-inviting us as much as we are not members of the East African community to walk with them. And we found that to be very encouraging. The minister further outlined the solutions to Africa's infrastructure challenges to unlock the potential for free movement of goods and services to achieve better trade. When we went to Santan Media, we were still talking about identification of the projects. Now there's agreement that we need a speed train across the continent. And I'm happy to report to you, and I'm sure you'll hear that from the chairperson herself, uh, that uh, the, you know, uh, this pre-feasibility studies and studies, we are almost finishing that, of making sure that Africans who cannot fly can also ride by train from one place to the next. Because it's one thing to say we want free movement of goods and services, but if transporting cattle from Uganda to Kenya takes two weeks, it means that there's a lot that needs to be done on infrastructure connectivity. So the speed train is going on, a project is going on well. We're working in partnership with China, and China announced uh, in your presence, I guess, 300 billion on supporting Africa on this infrastructure project despite the set aside 94 billion rand on projects that were just about uh, South Africa. I referred to Yamasukru earlier on. There are programs that are focused on making sure that the youth are not left behind, that they are skilled. So we spent three days at a retreat in uh, uh, Mekele, here in, in, uh, as, as the executive council here in Ethiopia, looking at what works in which country, so that that which we put on paper, we shouldn't be going the long route because we don't have time. I was very excited. I was very reluctant at first because there's a lot at home, but I had benefited so much on how we could implement and how this 10 year implementation plan, the first 10 years implementation plan of Agenda 2063 is not only feasible, is doable. The AU chairperson in her opening remarks lamented the regression of advancement of women in the continent. These were the minister's thoughts. My thought is, uh, and I've shared this with her, before the OAU was formed, there was a Pan-African Women's Organization. Uh, this is our history. It was formed on the 31st of uh, July in Tanzania. Remember the Freedom Charter of South Africa? The women started it. 
1954, women had a women's charter. So we never give up. She lamented that because she wanted to raise our awareness that power is not a bag of oranges. We are going to have to stand up. As I said, I have now learned that patriarchy is not an African thing only. It's all over the world. When people talk leadership, they think men. But we've seen progress here in the continent where men and women work in partnership.